What is going on guys? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to create low poly art like this one here using Triangulate Image 5 and this is without using Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator and this is awesome guys. This is a free application you guys can download. I'll post the download link in the description so you guys could check it out and I'm not sponsored by them in any way so don't think of that. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. And I used this image here. It's a picture of a, uh, of a you know a cute little puppy. So here's the original image and this is the result. I know it looks really weird because that's that's how low poly art is okay. So here is the uh, the original. You can see there's a lot of points of where I added the points, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now and how sh how to use the program. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, okay? All right. So go ahead and go over to Triangulate Image Five. I'll post again the link in the description so you guys can download this program here. It is for free. So download it, open it up, and it's going to be in that little folder there. And when you open up Triangulate Image Five. Uh, it's going to give you this little window, this little dialog to show you how to use this little palette here, uh, this little tools window. And here you click on choose an image to of course select the picture. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to select dog. And you can see that it, it opens up the whole entire image in full screen. So if you choose an image that is like 1920 by 1080, expect the image to fill your whole entire screen because this program cannot zoom in or zoom out, which is a bad thing, I guess, kind of like a con. The pros are, I guess, that you can do low poly art very quickly, easier and faster. And it's more, I guess, convenient, I guess, if you're a beginner. But if you're not a beginner, then I guess you could stick with Illustrator. For the most part, Illustrator is, I guess, the way to go for designs and Photoshop for more uh, for images and stuff like that. In this program, it's a little bit different. You can't really zoom in, of course, like I just said. You know, you can work much quicker and do all of that. You can't undo, so you can't press Command Z or Control Z to go back. And you can't save the file. There's no little window up here. But you can save your points. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to use this. So, you know, choose an image. That's where you open up the image. And I would highly suggest you guys use a high quality image like this one here I just pulled off of Google. If you choose like a small image, like say you downloaded a picture that is like 640 by 360, it's going to open up in a small window, okay? It doesn't matter if it's in low quality because you're going to shrink it back down. You're going to scale it back down. But it's much easier to work with so you can see where you're doing your points. So the blur radius, I just keep this at 5 and 10. I don't like to mess with this here, but you can if you want. And oh, I forgot to add, you also want to choose the image with some contrast on it. So like you see, you can tell where the, the eyes are and the nose, the mouth, the ears the face okay if you choose something that doesn't have a lot of contrast it's gonna be much much more difficult blur I don't really mess with that there but it's to blur I guess the, the image here save points so if I just start clicking okay blah 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 you can see that there's little points here now if I click on mesh you're gonna see that it added these little weird triangles and I'll, and I'll get to that in just a second but if you want to save the points this is pretty much how you save your file you click save points okay and the new window will pop up if you're on a, on a Mac it's gonna look like this but it should be the same on Windows. Save as, just give it a name, blah, blah, blah. I saved mine as dog points because I'm going to show you guys how it looks like after. But, you know, we could choose a location where to save it to. And so, yeah, once you click save, you can just click on load points. And I have dog points here. I'm going to click open. And all of the points will be saved on uh, the previous one that I did right now before I started this uh, tutorial. If I click on mesh, you can see all of the points that I have added. And I click on result, and this is the result that you will end up with. So if I go to original, you can see that you can see all the points. Now keep in mind that the low poly art that we're going to be making in this uh, program is not going to be as good as in Illustrator, of course, but it's much easier to do and much quicker. So that's pretty much the main thing of using this program. And it looks good too. It's not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and choose an image because I want to get the points off and you can't erase them, which kind of sucks. So you have to open up the image again. Okay. So the points are gone now. So we have original. This is to click on the original image here. Uh, the mesh, this is where you can bring up the mesh and I'll show you that in a bit. Blurred won't, uh, you won't, you won't be able to see anything unless you start adding points. So results, um, of course you can't see anything. But uh, once we click on mesh, you're going to see that there's lines here. What you want to go ahead and do is first click somewhere. I'm going to just start like right here. And when you once you click there, it's going to add this little point. 
what you want to do is you want to go around the face of the dog, the body, whatever you're going to be using. Just outline it first and then start clicking and adding detail. So the more times you click on a particular part of the eye or the mouth or whatever, the more detailed the image will be. And the less points you add, the less detailed the image will become. So what you want to go ahead and do is just go ahead and just start clicking away. That's all you have to do, just click. You don't have to hold down a shortcut or anything. And that's the beauty of this program as well. In Illustrator, you would have to click and do all of these shortcuts and then paste it, sample a color. That it would take a very long time. The result will be much better. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start clicking uh, around around its face, try to do as best as you can. And I'm gonna just speed things up just for the sake of this tutorial. The reason you want a lot of contrast in an image is so you can know where to add the points. So if you mess up, just go to the eraser tool. Again, there's no undo button or shortcut and just click in between this little in between the lines and that will get rid of them so that looks good and click off of this you will know that the tool you have selected will be in blue so it will be highlighted in blue so I'm gonna just go ahead and just click around a very you know doing a very poorly job <laughs> So if I go to result, you can see the outline of the dog, which is good. So now that you've done that, you want to go ahead and click on the areas that are more obvious. So obviously the white part right here. So I'm going to just go ahead and select the white fur. I'm going to just click like that. I'm doing this very quickly so you guys kind of know what I'm doing here. So I'm going to just click around this, go around the mouth, under the mouth, of course. And then I'll click on result and you can kind of start to see it taking shape. And that's pretty much what you have to do. And for the eye, you want to add more detail. So more clicks uh, around the eye will come out better because you can see the actual eye. So the less points, you won't be able to see it. So you want to take some time with the eye. Um, the body, not so much. Just, you know, go around the shaded areas, the brightest parts here. You want to go around the nose and go around the details to start clicking. So if I were to do the nose, I would just go like this. So go around the nose just like that. And once you're done, you want to start adding more points. So we'll go around the highlights, start clicking inside of them, and if we go to result, you can kind of start to see it take place. So maybe go down here and follow its like little nostrils, and uh, go down like that, and then this part, and then go around its other nostril. So if we go to result, you kind of start to see it taking uh, shape. So that's what you have pretty much have to do for the rest of this. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up and show you guys how it will look like once it has finished. <laughs> guys so I'm pretty much kind of finished now and this is what I got here it literally took me like I don't know 10 minutes I guess uh, and if you click on result you can kind of see that the more points you add the more detailed the image will be so you want to add more detail around the eyes the nose the mouth and the eyebrows of course you know the dog doesn't really have eyebrows but if you're doing this on a human being uh, then uh, you want to go around the eyebrows of course around the lips, around the nose, um, and around this part, I added more detail around the eyes, the ears, of course, and in darker areas, you want to add more points to really make them stand out. And you also want to do the mouth, the body parts as well, and you're pretty much good to go. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. All you have to do is click on result, and you're done. Now, to save the actual image, click on write to PDF. You can't save it as a JPEG. So I'm going to just save it as dog. I'm going to save it to my desktop and click save. And here it is, okay? Now, if you're on a Mac, uh, you can just double click on this, and there should be an option to save it as a JPEG. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't, I've never actually done it, but I heard you can't do it. So, this is our pretty much our finished picture, and you can see it kind of looks weird right here, but that's okay. So, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over to File, and I'm gonna go to Export, and it's gonna give you a few options. I'm not sure if you can do this on a Windows uh, computer, but here you give the format. I'm gonna choose JPEG and it gives you the quality here i'm gonna do best resolution 150 pixels per inch click save uh let me go ahead and uh, rename it to dog 2 click save we now have dog 2 if we open that up it should be a jpeg there we go good to go and if you want a uh if you want it to be a png just go over to file export and then save it as a png Although I can't promise that the background will be, you know, a PNG because it's it has a white background. The only way to have it as a PNG is to actually open it up in Photoshop or in another program and remove the, the white background. 
and then save it as a PNG. If you guys found this video helpful, please leave a rating in the section below. That will be much appreciated. Comment anything you guys would like, maybe a video suggestion, and I will catch you guys on my next video. Until then, peace out, take care, and enjoy your day.